Fellow YouTuber Ashiroku24's idea submission became a much different LEGO set, the LEGO Ideas Insect Collection. Now, were the changes justified? Did people really get what they voted for? Let's find out. If nothing else, the insects got upgrades in the form of three display bases, each of them having distinct shapes and flora. This makes it way easier to showcase the insects that would otherwise be harder to display on their own, though my initial thoughts when building the set were that more than half of the pieces of this product weren't actually used to build the things that gave this set its name, the insects. My point being the set could have been off the price. I'll discuss price later, but truth be told, the display bases do look nice and if you're a fan of botanical sets, here's a few extra items for your LEGO plant collection. All of these were actually great to build, with nice studs not on top techniques and clever piece usage for some angles. The beetle base also showcases some sort of mushrooms and under it there's some sort of cocoons, represented with the white croissant elements. The Chinese mantis display also stays at an angle and has a bunch of leaves coming out of it, including a new one I've never seen before. This is where we kinda find our first insect in the form of an exclusive printed one by one round tile for the ladybug. The initial project submission had a brick built ladybug, so the tile is clearly a downgrade, though on the other hand, this makes it so that all of the five insects included in the set are properly scaled amongst themselves. The butterfly base has some brick built flowers going on, made with interesting piece choices, on top of which we find insect number 2. DB. Another victim of the downscaling process the set went through, but again in favor of realistic scale which I can get behind. And I gotta highlight the transparent bent bar to which the insect is connected, as well as the minifigure fairy wings element recolored in transparent and an egg element with an exclusive print for the abdomen. But now the real insects come in. The Hercules beetle is my least favorite of the big three, but it is represented quite well regardless of my taste for it, especially in the horn area with the use of several different specialized elements. Its translucent wings were replicated with the use of a bunch of transparent orange pieces to a decent result and they can somewhat be adjusted due to the way they are connected with the body, same thing with the shell. There's also the option of removing the wings and closing the shell for a different display pose and I think I actually prefer this one over the open wings version, but I'm curious to know your takes on it. The blue morpho butterfly is a simpler build with not that many specialized elements but still great in its own right. The way the top part of the wing sits at an angle is great, the gradient of shades of blue is on point and at the tip of the wings we have exclusive 2x2 corner tiles for some decoration. Kinda feel like picking different colored lego pieces and make different butterflies based off of this one. Finally, the Chinese mantis is the last insect of the collection, probably my favorite due to really liking lime green colored bricks. This one is a massive win in regards to nice parts usage. The feet were made with sand green lego minifigure revolver elements, the antennas are golden crowbar pieces and the claws are probably some lego ninjago blades of some sort. Despite not holding himself quite well, is the more poseable insect of the collection, having many movable joints for you to display it the way you see feet and notice the printed eye elements as well. Each of the insects has its own instruction booklet, so this is one of those great sets to build with someone else. And there's a fourth book that highlights my boy Ashiroku, facts about the set, the insects and the LEGO designers themselves. The final set turned out to be quite different from what people voted for initially, but the inclusion of the display bases makes total sense for stability and displayability value and while the bee and the ladybug were downscaled and play a secondary role in the product, those changes made all insects stay in scale to one another, which I think was a smart decision. The price for the product, while not being as impressive as the one for the Viking village, is still better than most LEGO releases these days, with over 1100 pieces for the price of $80, so you really can't go wrong with this one. Links to purchase it online are in the description if you wish to support the channel. Now I have a bunch of other reviews to prepare for you guys, so while you wait for them, 
Remember the Viking village? The one with the impressive price? It really is mind-blowing how LEGO did all of that for so little. And if you don't believe me, watch that video here while you subscribe and wait for the Concord review coming next.